In this video, I'd like to talk about the subject of trigonometry. And the way that I think about trigonometry is that it's essentially the study of triangles. And specifically, we're going to look at the angles within a triangle and the relationship between those angles and the side lengths of a triangle. So you can see I've drawn this triangle here. And on the inside, we have this angle here. And this symbol, this is the Greek letter theta. So let me write that out. So we have theta, which is usually used in reference to angles. Though sometimes you'll see the symbol alpha, which is also a Greek letter. These are typically used when talking about angles. But one of the key features of trigonometry is essentially given a certain angle, what's the relationship between, let's say, the opposite side of the triangle and the hypotenuse? Or you could look at the relationship between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, or the hypotenuse and the opposite side. Essentially, all of these different ratios we've given different names to. So let me start introducing those. And the first one I'll start with is the sine. So it's always going to be the sine of the angle. And the sine function is going to look at the ratio between the opposite side of the triangle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. So the sine function is essentially this ratio, this fraction here, of the opposite side compared to the hypotenuse. And after the sine function, the other most commonly seen one is the cosine. Now the cosine deals with the ratio between the adjacent side, the side next to the angle, and the hypotenuse. So the cosine you'll see written as the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And at some point you'll further understand why we look at these ratios, but as of right now, you may have been wondering what those sine and cosines buttons on the calculators actually do. And hopefully after this video and several more, you'll at least have a general idea of how they work. And besides the sine and the cosine, probably the third most used trigonometric function is what we call the tangent. So the tangent, this is the ratio of the opposite side compared to the angle divided by the adjacent side compared to the angle. So the tangent we write as the opposite divided by the adjacent. So opposite over adjacent for tangent. Now one thing you can do to remember all of these ratios is to remember the phrase so ka toa. So anytime I do a trigonometry problem, I essentially will write this at the top of the page. And notice that for s, for instance, the sine function, that it's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Whereas, for instance, the tangent function over here for t is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So this SOKATOA will essentially tell us what these ratio ratios should be. So let's look at an example problem just so you can get an idea of how all of this works. So let's say we have some right triangle and we want to know if this angle is 30 degrees and this side length is 4, what is the hypotenuse? So with this question, first I'm going to write down my SOKATOA because I know I'm going to be doing some trigonometry because I have an angle and a missing side length. And we want to think compared to this angle, what is this side and what is this side? So the long side is always the hypotenuse. So that narrows it down. We're either going to use sine or cosine because they have a hypotenuse in it. But then we also know the side that's opposite the angle. So essentially what we have is both the opposite and the hypotenuse, which would be the sine function. Because remember, the sine of whatever our angle is, is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we could rewrite this as the sine of 30 degrees, since we know our angle theta here is 30, is equal to the opposite, which is 4, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. And now it's just a matter of solving for x. So I'm going to multiply each side of the equation by x, so that I essentially can cancel it out in the denominator here. So I get x times the sine of 30 equals 4 
And then if I scroll down, make a little bit more room, I'm going to divide each side by this sine of 30. So I get 4 over the sine of 30. And the sine of 30, you'll need a calculator to evaluate. And the truth is, there are ways to evaluate this by hand. And if you ever make it into Calculus 2 and learn about Taylor series, you'll learn how to actually compute these. However, for this class, that's far too advanced. So what you have to do with this is essentially just enter sine of 30 into the calculator, but make sure that you're in degree mode. So there are two choices. It could be either in radians or degrees. And since we're putting in degrees, you want to go to the mode button and change it to degrees. Otherwise, if it's in radian mode, it'll give you a wrong answer. And the sine of 30, what you'll find out is simply equal to 1 half. So when we plug this in, we have 4 divided by 1 half. And 4 divided by a half is the same thing as 4 times 2 over 1, which is 8. So x, our missing side length, or essentially our hypotenuse here, would have to be 8. And with that in mind, let's look at another example. Let's say that we have some other right triangle. And let's say this angle here is 40 degrees. And we'll also say this side length is 10. And we want to know what this side length is. So I will call this y just to change up the letters a little bit. And again, since we're going to be doing trigonometry, we have an angle and a side length. So we need to find the relationship between the two. So I'm going to use my so toa and we're looking at sides compared to this angle. So this right here is adjacent to the angle and this right here is opposite. So we want to go to our so toa and find the opposite and the adjacent paired together, which looks like the tangent function. So the tangent of your angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so we can plug in our numbers here since we know the angle is 40 degrees and we're comparing this to the opposite divided by the adjacent where the opposite is 10 and the adjacent is y and now we want to get y out of the denominator so we're going to multiply everything by y and they cancel out on the right hand side so we get y times the tangent of 40 degrees equals 10 and from here we just want to solve for y so I'm going to divide everything by the tangent of 40. So y is 10 divided by the tangent of 40. And again, what you're going to have to do is go to your calculator to evaluate this. And once you compute this, you'll see that it's about 0.839. So when we divide 10 by that number, you should get about 11.92. And this is a very approximate answer.